Hello friends, my name is Thiraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 17 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we will learn all about equity turnover ratios. In simple terms, equity turnover ratio tells us how much sales a company is generating on its average equity. So in this tutorial we have basically four focuses. Number one, we learn all about equity turnover ratio, what it means. Number two, its formula and its calculations. Number three, we'll apply those calculations on the Colgate case study that we have. And number four, its interpretations and uses. So before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder, we will need the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, then please do so from the description link below. And to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, Please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is equity turnover ratio? Equity turnover ratio is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the operating efficiency category. In our previous videos, we learned about the asset turnover ratio and the net fixed asset turnover ratio. An equity turnover ratio is more or less uh, very similar to these two ratios. On one side, when we considered the asset turnover ratio, we said, let's find out how much the company generates in terms of sales per dollar of its assets investments. But when we talk about equity turnover on similar lines, we try to see how much the company is able to generate sales from its uh, shareholders equity. So. Let's say if the equity turnover is a 2.0, this would mean that the company is generating dollar two as the revenue from each dollar investment from the shareholders equity. So that's how is the equity turnover actually you know uh, interpreted. Uh, it's very similar to the asset turnover ratio. Let's now look at the formula for the equity turnover ratio. The formula is again very similar equity turnover ratio. It starts with it's basically net sales divided by your average equity. All right. So again, uh, net sales is different from gross sales or, uh, you know, any other type of sales which is given on the income statement. Net sales essentially means that uh, whatever your gross sales are and you deduct your uh, refunds and returns. That's what is the net sales all about. And when we talk about average equity, we consider the equity which has been invested in the company, right? So from the shareholders, uh, so uh, when uh, during an IPO, you know, the company comes up with uh, uh, lots of shares and uh, uh, also the average equity we are talking about is the average of the start of the year equity and the end of the year equity. So please remember that this shareholders equity is the balance sheet item and uh, on the balance sheet, we get the data for a specific point in time. Right. So at the start of the year and the end of the year. So it's better to take an average of the two so that the calculation that we do is not uh, uh, skewed towards the start or the end of the year. Right. Because during the year, lots of changes may happen. So if your end of the equity year uh, data is very small compared to the start of the year, your calculations may become disproportionate. So that's why the average number of the balance sheet equity is taken here. Now, let's look at a quick calculation of this equity turnover ratio with the help of an example. So here is the data that we have. There are two companies, company A and company B, and we have been provided with some data like the gross sales numbers and the sales discount and the equity at the end of the year and the beginning of the year. All right. So let's uh, find out the equity turnover ratio, the equity turnover ratio is net sales divided by your average equity right so the first step will be to find out what's the net sales number the net sales here is gross sales minus your sales discount right so this will be 10000 minus 500 so this comes out to be 9500 and for company b it will be 7800 so this is the net sales amount average equity is the average of these two numbers. So let's find that out. 
average of 4000 and 5000 we get this as 4500 and for company b this is again 4500 all right so um, the equity turnover will be 9500 divided by 4500 this is 2.11 and for company b this comes out to be 1.33 so what is the interpretation let's say if these two companies are operating in the same industry we can say that company a is able to generate higher sales per unit of its shareholders investment so uh, because they are able to generate dollar 2.11 uh, of sales when they invest dollar one in shareholders equity as compared to company b that generates only dollar 1.73 per unit of their shareholders equity this seems to be fine like right but when it comes to the interpretation of equity turnover ratios you need to remember two things first is that they should be from the same industry okay so you cannot compare uh, let's say a utility company with uh, let's say a services company so obviously when we talk about uh, companies which uh, involve high capital expenditures they have a very low equity turnover ratio but when we look at services oriented companies they would have a high uh, equity turnover ratios so you cannot compare services company with a utilities company that's that's point number one that you need to remember second uh, is again very important uh, which means that if you look at this ratio this ratio can be easily manipulated now what do i mean by easily manipulated is that let's say if the management wants to uh, improvise upon its equity turnover ratio what options do they have right what options can they look at can they increase net sales of course not because net sales will depend on the competition and everything else so this cannot be done but uh, this will it is a natural process right increasing net sales but when it comes to uh, equity this is the average of the equity right the average equity is the average of these two numbers now let's say if the beginning was at 3000 can the management do something to change the equity at the end of the year can they take some steps to do that there are certain steps by which you know they can easily do that they can look at buyback of uh, equity now, buyback of shareholders equity would mean that they would buy back shares uh, either from the cash which they have uh, on the balance sheet or maybe they can raise debt and buy back, right? They can do that or they can use the current uh, cash uh, in the bank, right? They can also use that. So let me give you a hypothetical example to uh, elaborate on these two things. Let's say at the beginning, I'll just take this example, the same example here. I'll just copy and paste this. Company B. That's in blue. All right. So let's say at the end of the year, they this company B new raises debt of dollar two thousand. Okay, and they use it to buy back this uh, equity. All right. So if they buy back equity worth dollar 2000 if earlier it was 6000 now it will become 4000 right so this will be equal to this minus 2000 okay so the equity at the end of the year would be 4000 now look at the equity turnover ratio what has happened to the equity turnover ratio equity turnover ratio has increased to 2.23 so what i was trying to tell you is that the management can impact the equity turnover ratio by changing the capital structure of the company the capital structure of the company changes by raising debt and then you go into the buyback and uh, reduce your equity further that can be done all right so uh, you have to always uh, go back and look at what and why these things are happening and uh, if you want to compare the two companies you should always know the history of their buybacks and uh, so what has happened in the shareholders equity structure altogether in the previous periods too all right so with this we understand now what equity turnover ratio is its calculations and interpretations let's now look at uh, the calculation of equity turnover ratio in our colgate case study here is the balance sheet of colgate and let's now calculate the equity turnover ratio of colgate 
for that uh, please scroll down to row number 122 this is where we will calculate the equity turnover ratios we have calculated the other operating efficiency ratios above the like the total assets turnover and the net fixed asset turnover here and now we will calculate the equity turnover ratio so what all do we require for equity turnover ratio we require the net sales divided by our average equity right so that's what we need uh, net sales is found from the income statement and the average equity will get it from the balance sheet uh, data above okay so let's uh, start linking it and see how the calculations are so this is equal to net sales data is uh, 15454 so that's the income statement net sales and the balance sheet we'll have to take the balance sheet average average of the equity right so let's crawl towards the balance sheet and see what is there in the shareholders equity so we see that the shareholders equity is at row number 37 we see there's lots of other things as well like you know common stock additional paid in capital retained earnings accumulated other comprehensive income unearned compensation and treasury stocks so the number that we will consider is the total shareholders equity here okay these two so this is the amount that is has been invested in the company now why this is a negative number and and why you know uh, we have to be careful about uh, its interpretations as you remember we just discussed that there could be a situation of buybacks right and uh, the buybacks could lead to reduction in the shareholders equity number so buybacks can be done by using the current cash or maybe you can raise debt to do that right but uh, in the case of colgate this buyback has happened from the cash which uh, they had so what we can see here is the amount of buyback is so high that the shareholders equity number is negative so when we actually calculate the formula we see that the equity turnover is minus 102 0.01 so you actually can't interpret this ratio altogether because this is in a negative zone you can't say that the company is generating minus 102.01 as sales per dollar of its investment in shareholders equity so this is you cannot interpret altogether let's look at the other years as well so it's minus 191.9020092 and 38.30 so we can actually conclude for uh, colgate that uh, you cannot deduct anything from here because of the fact that Colgate has been investing heavily in uh, its buyback so we can see the past five years trends they've been buying back it seems like there's a company policy of buying back each year and uh, its shareholders equity is is almost negligible so that's why the numbers are either inflated or it doesn't make sense altogether so with this let's also look at you know how the equity turnover ratio looks like for procter and gambles okay let's look at that too i'll just delete this and remove just so that we have some space here so procter and gambles we said that uh, it has dollar 71 billion dollars of sales on i mean this is the approximate number and uh, the average equity number for procter and gambles is somewhere around 47 billion dollars so 47 billion dollars is the average equity of procter and gambles and 71 is this net sales so what will be the equity turnover ratio this will be dollar 71 divided by dollar 47 and this comes out to be in decimals it is 1.51 okay so this number still can be interpreted but this 38.30 and 2092 of course you know if you cannot compare Colgate with Procter & Gamble's on the basis of equity turnover. Procter & Gamble's equity turnover 1.51 means that the company is able to generate a sales of dollar $1.51 per dollar of its investment in shareholders. So with this, I hope you understood the, the calculation of uh, equity turnover ratios in Colgate. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a new topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics very regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the latest video. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day. Thank you.